r slash ask men. Jamie Blaberry's 11 says. Men, would you date a woman with vaginismus? How early on would you want to know? Vaginismus is when penetration is extremely painful, limiting piv. I have this, but I'm going to start pelvic floor part. I recently broke up with my partner that I had trouble having sex with, I have no idea if it'll be easier with a new person, I was able to have sex without pain before my last partner. Anyways, would this be an absolute deal breaker? If not, when would you want the girl to tell you? I'm not going to add it to my dating profile obviously. I kind of want to just try 6 and see how it goes, but also want to be upfront with my potential partners so they can make the right decision for them. I'm worried about getting hot and heavy and then my body not working and feeling super embarrassed and disappointing the guy. Huang says. It is a deal breaker if it turns out that we can't have piv sex without pain. But I'm at least willing to try and see if I'm one it does work with, or if the part is showing progress. But piv sex is fairly important to me. And if I knew it hurt you, that would ruin it. Jamie Blaberry's 11 says. Like you'd try it once, and if it was painful say not mind. Or try it ongoing as the person progresses in part. Huang says. See how it progresses, I suppose. Snoolamans5609 says. Well, do you give head and open the back door for business? Dog says. Op probably thinks this is crude or joking, but I would seriously consider this as a part of the question. As a dude, one way or another, I need that nut. If my partner isn't participating in that, the relationship is going to have problems. Not immediately, not every time, but as a pattern. For an example, my wife is pregnant, and as such regularly exhausted. Sex isn't happening as much as I would like, but given the situation I'm happy to take care of myself, while we are going through this stage. If her sexual participation stayed at this level, I would not be stoked, and it would create discussions and potentially problems if it persisted. Langleg Shortpants says. From what I understand vaginismus is something that can be worked on with dilators and stuff, so I wouldn't say it's a deal breaker for me as long as she wants to have sex as much as I do and is taking the steps to try to make that happen and I would be patient and help where needed. The problem for me would arise if she had vaginismus, didn't do anything about it and chose to minimize the piv sex. She had BC of it. An active slash healthy sex life is important to me, and piv sex is part of that. As for when I'd want my partner to tell me, I don't think she has to until we are about to have sex, but definitely tell me before we do, so I don't feel like I'm doing something terribly wrong. Gltayantlpravnunkant says. I would definitely date a woman with said condition. I'd like to try to help her get through it. My understanding is that it can be cured. Not a deal breaker for me, because I think sex is much more than just piv. Out of curiosity, would you be willing to date a guy that suffers from ed? Would your medical condition make you more empathetic for the issue from his part? Ruminations Zero says. I would date them, and I think it's up to them when they say. I wouldn't be ready for sex very soon in a relationship regardless. Enjoy Outdoors says. I was in a relationship with a girl a few decades ago that never told me about her condition. What she did instead was that she put us in a situation where it was quite obvious that hardness was about to meet wetness and it wasn't until after actually realizing that I too was a truly painful experience that she curled up in a ball crying told me what it was all about. Hey, don't do it like that. So, she managed to have me in 4-3 seconds or something like that, before realizing that her condition hadn't suddenly magically healed itself, and cried instead. It should come as no surprise to you that I was, quite invested in the going in part of it right there, and then in that situation, and I probably did a poor job snapping out of horny mode, so that I could figure out why she was crying. 
It's also a super strange situation to have that conversation that I, well, kind of forced her to have there, and then because I wanted to know what the actual FSCK was going on. So, I guess that is my first advice. This is a conversation that you are going benefit from having when you are fully clothed. But it's also, in a kind of hilarious way, a conversation that says dude, you are probably going to end up in my pants sometime soon. Which means that you should not the conversation too soon either. Anyhow. On to the next part of the advice I came here to give, most people who have sex, think of it as a super important part of their relationship. Men and women alike, we would all walk away from a relationship that is not sexual. So, the question you need to ask yourself is, if you allow me to be blunt, how important is it to be cured? Because, damn it, I cannot imagine decades and decades of hurting my favorite woman for the sake of my own pleasure. If you don't care to be cured, or give up on being cured, then you are going to have a roller coaster type of a relationship, because most guys have a hint of a giver in us, measuring our self worth as lovers by how what we are doing is received by our partner. Being unable to appreciate penetration, and not just not have mind blowing orgasms from, but actually being in pain from is very much a deal breaker in a giver's mindset. He is unable to find his footing in a sexual relationship, if you can't find a way. The girl I was with all those years ago, we did find a way. We discovered, completely unscientifically, that it was better when I was all still in her. Movement was awful, but presence was more manageable. I guess you can say that she used me as a dilator. A presence to have him there, to get used to it. It has, to be honest, changed me. It changed my view on sex. I'm still very very fond of sex that is more about being close than about being fast and fierce. If you achieve that, then I can assure you that you most definitely can have sex, just not the way everyone expects to. It's more about intimacy and love than it's about lust. Different, but absolutely nothing wrong with it. Eventually, she actually got used to the whole penetration ordeal. Took maybe a year or something like that with plenty opportunity. I still think of that year as one of my fondest sexual memories, despite how the first time with her turned out. Would I do it again? If she aims for a super skater says. Dating a girl with virginsmas right now. It was trouble early on, especially because statistically I'm bigger than average. Eventually she wanted it so bad we started off slow, then ramped it up from there. She still has to tap out sometimes, but it's definitely no deal breaker, especially because she loves giving her all. R slash ask men. Grandma Flan says. How do you overcome the feeling of emptiness? Falaf Gondolin says. Empty things become full when you keep putting things inside. Keep learning new things and seeking new experiences. Under underscore the underscore above says. Purpose. It doesn't have to be grand, pets, hobbies, a social life. Anything where effort results in some achievement, no matter how small. Rinse and repeat, if it becomes a chore. Coadza says. Sometimes you just gotta acknowledge it, feel it, and let it play out, hello darkness my old friend, and all that jazz. Kofina Trip says. Gotta fill that void with something, preferably something that is not self-destructive. First, I'd fill it with some therapy, to try and delve into why you feel empty. Try creating something, whether it's art, a book, furniture, something as simply as a shelf counts, learn something that is somewhat unique. Gloom My Application 411 says. Fill it with good friends, hobbies, goal smashing and self improvement. If it's a lady friend you're talking about get out of your self isolation, and do things that make you happy and push your social norms, might be some disappointment here but eventually someone of that sex might enjoy your crap sense of humor and what you like. 
pick up some new skills like cooking, and make yourself more interesting. W0K3Y says. As someone who has overcame it, I can tell you I don't know how I did it. CNNLGNS says. Find what you are passionate about and pursue that. And Silly Orion Tita says. I think you stop resisting. Once you stop resisting you gain a whole load of energy you can use on living a better life. Atomic habits, improve 0.5%. A day. Allow yourself days to slip back and forgive yourself. Start again the next day. Look beyond the momentary pain and suffering. When you are happy or a bit more content try and stay balanced, avoid the extreme of emotion as naturally they can polarize your feelings and mental health. Accept the suffering, but don't get lost in it. Good luck. Mouth, breather says. A great big dinner. Kyle Sadoe says. Fill it with porn, video games, reddit, and alcohol. Edin Zico 98 says. I used to fill it with watching porn, and playing video games for days and tbh it's all a waste of time. Now I'm learning French. Trying to learn data analysis, and trying to revive my passion for reading books. Pormon Stonis Ducks says. By accepting that it's the natural state. I just go ha, huh, that's a thing, and then move on because it's not interesting or useful. Just start doing stuff and fill the void. Viratiches13 says. People find meaning in different ways. It's hard to define meaning without being self-referential, but it boils down to a person's attachment to a concept. The reason for attachment and the type of concept can determine a lot, as well as the level of attachment to the concept. Because we as individuals inherently want it, because it lets us make decisions we couldn't before, because it makes others assign meaning to us, and looping back, because we as a community want it. It's an attachment to an object, to a person, to a group of people, to a job, to nature, to anything. It's an obsession, a hobby, a passing interest. The most basic and hollow ways of finding meaning is impersonal material gain. Jim Jim it's mine. I want it. I want the things, because I identify as person who has stuff. New car, caviar, four star, daydream think I'll buy a football team. The reasons why people can be attached to the concept of materialism are, that possession can convey wealth, they can convey power and they can serve a utility. Yagts are giant compensation boats, but they are also functional modes of transport. Some people see materialism trying to project power, and see only children fighting over toys in a sandbox. These people find meaning in the power itself. Not. That's all for this video thank you for watching please subscribe.